everyone, how y'all doing? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. And today we are doing the third and final video in how I outline my novels series. So in this episode, we are finally talking about what I use to outline my novels, how I outline my novels, and I'm very excited to talk about it. So if you've missed the first two episodes, I will link the playlist up above. In the first episode, I briefly go over my entire process. And then in the second episode, I talk more in depth about brainstorming, character creation, and also world building. But today, it's all about the actual outline. So to outline my novels, I use Say the Cat Writes a Novel. This was originally written by Blake Snyder for screenwriters, but Jessica Brody has taken the beat sheet and adapted it for novel writing. This book literally cracked the code for me when it comes to outlining. I'm not even kidding to you guys. Jessica Brody just explains everything in a really easy to understand way and even gives like modern day examples from books to kind of demonstrate how each beat should work or what each beat should kind of look like, which I find really, really helpful because sometimes you're reading a craft book and it just talks about all these like old classic books or just books never even heard of. And so it's just it's not as helpful as something like this where it has examples from like the Hunger Games which is obviously a much more modern or well-known book. Save the Cat essentially uses this beat sheet that breaks down story structure into three acts with different plot points that you need to hit along the way within each act and it's just a really good way to break down story structure and see what stories are actually made out of. So let's just talk about the beat sheet really quick and then I'll kind of talk about how I use the beat sheet and use this book to kind of outline my own book. So if you buy this book then you you can flip to page 24 and it breaks down every single beat and the first beat in act one is the opening image so this is essentially like one scene before a snapshot of your character and their world and the second beat is theme stated so this one is just a statement made by a character that kind of hints at the arc that your character will go on and also a side note these beats don't necessarily have to be in this order like don't make your story work for the beat sheet make the beat sheet work for your story but the third one is the setup and this one is basically just setting up your character's world and your character and this is what we call their like status quo world so this is what their world looks like before things change and the four is the catalyst and this is basically an inciting incident or a life-changing event that happens to your main character that will catapult them into like a new world or a new way of thinking and then the last beat the fifth beat for act one is the debate and this is basically just a reaction from your character deciding what to do next and then we get into act two and the first beat is break into two so this is basically just the moment your character decides to take that call to action and go forward. The next beat is the B story. So this is just the introduction of a new character or new characters that will help your character along their journey. And then we have the fun and games beat, which is one of the largest beats in the book. This is basically where we just see our main character in their new world, either loving it or hating it. It's also called the promise of the premise. And then we have the midpoint. This is where the fun and games culminates into either a false victory or a false defeat. And then we have the bad guys close in. If your midpoint was a false victory, this section will be like a downward path for your main character, but if it was a false defeat, then it will be an upward path. Then we have the all is lost beat. So this is just the lowest point of the novel where something happens to your main character that kind of pushes them to rock bottom. Then we have Dark Knight of the Soul. And again, this is another like reaction beat where the main character is just trying to process everything that has happened. And then we come to act three and act three only has three beats to it. So the first one is the break into three. So this is like the aha moment. So this is when our character realizes what they must do to fix all of their problems. And then we have the finale. So this is where our main character proves that they have learned the theme and they enact the plan that they came up with in the break into three beat and then we have the final image and this is an after snapshot of our main character so that is the beat sheet and it's just like so easy to understand and something that i love about the save the cat beat sheet is that it can be applied to literally any kind of story any kind of genre if you look at the back of the book there are so many different examples of story genres and beat sheets to go along with those story genres and it's just really really helpful i definitely recommend getting this book or at least checking out the beat sheet online somewhere and just using that but i did just say if you can get your hands on a copy of this book it is so much more helpful because it just goes into so much more detail and literally like I said this book cracked the code for me for outlining it's literally annotate I love how I'm showing all the pages that aren't annotated it's literally annotated to like no end and literally this book is almost always sitting on my desk because I'm always referring back to it either when I'm actually writing or when I'm outlining or whatever this book isn't just helpful for when you're actually outlining your book but it's also helpful for when you've already written your book so if you're a pantser which is basically just somebody who 
it doesn't like to outline their books, I like to fly off the seat of their pants when writing. You can come back to this book when you're revising to help you put some structure into your story that may not already be there. And I just think oh, it's just so helpful and I will literally sing this book's praises till no end. I just love it so much. And now let's talk about how I actually use this beat sheet and create an outline for my story. So I usually start off by writing down all of the beats either on a piece of paper or in a Word document, usually in a Word document. And I will just write out what I think each beat should be, any ideas that I might have. Sometimes I don't know every single beat right off the bat. I mean, there are a lot of beats. I feel like the really large beats, like the fun and games and the bad guys close in, like all of those big beats. I typically don't really know what happens in there. So I might just like write like a quick summary of what I think could happen or I just leave it. My very first step is to kind of just fill in the beat sheet as much as I can with any ideas that I may have. If you guys watched the second episode where I talk about brainstorming, this is where a lot of that stuff will come in. That's why brainstorming is so helpful because then I can use that to help bulk up my beat sheet when I go to outline. And then when it's time to actually go into more detail and actually figure out my outline, I typically go act by act. It's just a lot easier to take it in small chunks that way. So I'll start with act one and I'll just focus on that. And that's all I'm worrying about. I'm going through, I'm just adding in detail, trying to figure out what everything should be. And I do my outline scene by scene. So I figure out every single scene that needs to be happening. So because I go through my outline scene by scene, there's one, a lot of detail that I try to put into it because if I don't put a lot of detail, then when I'm writing, I tend to flounder a lot and I don't really know what's going on. And I either get stuck or I just go on tangents that don't matter. My outlines tend to be quite long. They can range from like 15 to like 25,000 words, which is a lot for an outline. It's a lot, you know, and I realize that it's a lot. I need all the detail that I can into my outline before I start writing. No matter how much detail I put into my outline, sometimes it still doesn't feel detailed enough. So, I mean, your outline can never be detailed enough in my opinion. I try to fill in as much detail as I can. So this can be setting, like character descriptions, what's actually happening, obviously, dialogue, maybe what the character's actually feeling in the scene. Anything that I can fit into the outline, I will try to fit into the outline. I did something different when I was doing the show must go on than I've done in any other book and I didn't really like it. I liked it at the beginning, but then I just got like too bogged down and I didn't like it anymore. I might try to like figure out something in the future, but I basically was doing like what the scene number was, summary of the scene, who was in the scene, and I was like color coding everything and I was like putting out what each character was wearing so I wouldn't forget to describe things, but I still forgot to describe things. It was a mess, but I'm still trying to find like the perfect way to put everything actually into the outline to aid me in the best way possible when I'm writing but basically just try to jam pack all of the information that you can into the outline and that's basically what I do and then sometimes I really struggle with where I want things to happen or kind of how things are like looking and so I'll draw what's called a plot diagram in a way so plot diagrams is something I learned in English class in high school just talking about like rising action falling action things like that but basically just use like the structure of the plot diagram and I pinpoint everything on the say the cat beat sheet into here so we have like opening image, theme stated setup, catalyst debate, to break into two. Like I put all the beats on here and I kind of just like jot in where I think everything is happening. For some reason doing things like this really helps me to visualize it better and just gives me like a better idea of where things are going. So I'll make this for like the overall book. I'll also make it for like each individual act. I also have like multiple different versions. This is another version of it. Sometimes I make little timelines as well. This is like a little timeline of like one like beat of the book I think. I have just act two written out here because I was really struggling. I have one section of the book again written out here. I got another act two. I just have a lot of plot diagrams everywhere. I know I have like a really big one somewhere. Okay, let me get this out for you guys because I literally like tape pieces of paper together and made like a huge one. So I made a huge one. Was this actually helpful? I have no idea. Oh my god, I actually made this like the plot diagram. Like this is the beginning, exposition, this is rising action, climax, falling action, the end. We love that. I think this was like literally from the first draft. We love that. So I, I don't know why I find this so helpful. I think just because it is visual so I can kind of see where everything takes place maybe where things need more detail and more work that's why I like doing it for like the overall book and then for each act <sighs> I really do the most when I outline don't I okay so also I like to do some sort of timeline for the book so I know when every scene is taking place like on what day it's taking place on if you don't do the timeline beforehand it's really really hard to fix within the book. I've learned this from experience. I have vlogs where I'm like having a breakdown over the timeline of my current book because it's just, it's such a mess. Some things could be happening at this date, but then I'm like, oh, but this is like, it doesn't like match up with everything else. It's a real struggle. So what I typically do in my actual outline on my computer, I will write down what day I think it should be. I'll typically get out like a calendar. And the only thing about this is that if you want to assign like a specific year to it, that could be like a problem when you go to publish the book because typically books are set in the year that 
they're published unless it's like specifically supposed to be taking place in a different year. I don't specify a year in my book so I don't think it really matters. I just need to know like the days of the week essentially because I don't even really mention dates at all. So it's just like days of the week is what's important. So that's kind of what I go off of and I just have like the calendar in my head just for my own sake. So sometimes I'll write it at the top of a scene in my outline. Other times I'll do things like this where I write down each chapter and what days they take place on because sometimes chapters take place over multiple days. Timelines are really hard. Let me know down below if you guys have any tips for timelines and like how you do your timelines because god I hate doing timelines. How many times can I say timelines? I don't know. So anyways try to have some sort of timeline to avoid stress later on because I really hate having to revise timelines. So to end this video off I just want to talk about how I don't actually always follow my outline to a T because sometimes when I'm writing it something just won't feel right anymore. Either a character will just be like nagging at me and being like this isn't right and they want to do something else or sometimes it just doesn't fit right like where it is in the book maybe I'll realize it should be later on. Like sometimes just as I'm writing things just don't feel right anymore. I, I give myself permission to change it. I give myself permission to to delete the scene or to move the scene, make a character do something else. Like, I don't even know how many times my love interest in my book has done things that I did not plan or even my main character have done things that I did not plan and they typically end up being like my favorite scenes and I know that like a lot of people who are more of like on the pantsing side or the plantser side are like well I don't like outlining because I like the discovery process. Well I still get that you know. I don't barricade myself within my outline. I can go out of it and do other things. I don't make myself stick to my outline fully. I'll of course it does make problems for like later on but I just do whatever feels right kind of in the moment. My outline is essentially just there so that I have something to look at and something to follow because if I don't have that there I'm gonna get stuck. Like I did not finish a book until I had some sort of outline in place like some sort of plan in place. So I think that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this like gave you a bit more of an insight into my outlining process. It's a mess obviously I do a lot of different things within the, the my one process process but it's something that my brain understands and it's something that I've tried to get good at over the last couple of years and outlining is not necessarily a process that I enjoy all of the time but then again if you know me at all you know that I never really enjoy what I'm doing but I think that this process works for me. I've written two books with this outlining process specifically and it seems to be working okay I guess. I mean I don't really know so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about my outlining process that I did not answer in the three videos in the series definitely leave them down below and I'll try to answer them for you because I'm sure I've missed something or didn't properly explain something. If you're wondering anything, don't feel shy to ask me down below. I'm always open to talk and answer your guys' questions. Give this video a huge thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Comment down below the emoji of like the piece of paper with the pencil. It's not just the pencil, but like the piece of paper that has the pencil with it. Comment that down below if you guys stay till the very end. Subscribe if you have not yet already and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!